why do you think I say that in the modern music industry, unless you're signed to a major, as an independent artist particularly, developing your own unique sound, it's absolutely necessary. Why do you think that is? I started in 1994 when it was hard to make music, hard and expensive. The very first music I made was with a guy who had to get a bank loan, had to go and present a business plan to his bank to buy a sampler. Just imagine that. <laughs> Literally had to, got a full business plan. I'm going to start a record label and I need to make music. So I'm going to get a sampler. I think it was a sampler and something else. I can't remember what the other thing was. But anyway, because I think, I think it might have been a massive old mixing desk or something. So he got a sampler in his bedroom and we, there was four of us in this flat. So I started making music with him. His name was Andy. He ended up being, if you've heard of Groove Armada, he ended up being one half of uh, Groove Armada. But anyway, before that, we made music together. And the first ma music we made together, it actually did really well. It just kind of all, all went uh, crazy. But back then, it was much harder and more expensive to make music than it is now. Over the course of my career from 1994 till now, I've, what I've seen is the tools become cheaper and easier to use, which means many, many more people can start making music, which I say is a great thing. I'm not a, oh, oh, she's so much better in the olden days when only really rich and uh, extremely highly qualified people could make music. I'm not like that. I'm the opposite of that. I'm like, great, let's get more people making music and expressing themselves through music. I'm firmly in that camp. Okay. But what it does mean is that there's more music released now than it has ever been. Same true of distribution. You used to have to get things pressed on vinyl. Physically, you know, I remember actually physically taking them to shops, saying, Can you, do you want to buy some of these, mate? Yeah, so that that was what, that was what it used to be like. Yeah, I'm sounding really old now, aren't I? But anyway, so as a result of this dem democratization, which is a horrible word, but anyway, is of music, that means many, many more people are making it. As a result of that, in order to get heard, how are you going to get heard if you sound the same as everyone else? And when AI came along, and particularly when the AI music generators had got as good as they are now, I put some lyrics into Suno and see what it came up with. And I was absolutely blown away. And also, it was very, very funny what it came up with because it was just ridiculous. <laughs> so, but it was super generic, but really good. Like, like really, like, whoa, I was like, there was a, there's a track called I Think I Have a Problem where I use words like hobgoblin and things like that. You know, just w weird words that you wouldn't usually hear in a song because of that's one of the parts of my unique style. But hearing them sung in a kind of Imagine Dragons style, <laughs> I think I have a problem. It was like, it was absolutely hilarious. There's, there's a podcast episode about it, actually, which is very, very funny. But what I realized was what was always crucial with more and more people making music, if you think that We've, I don't know, 100x from 1994, the number of people who are making music. With AI music generators, we have, I don't know, 1,000x. It's just, it's a ridiculously lot bigger number of people can now make music. But those people can only make, with the way that AI music generators work, can only make generic music with the way that they are now. Generic music is going to be made by AI, which is really bad news. I mean, it's really bad news for a lot of people, and I'm very sad about that. I'm not, I'm not going, yay, hooray. But it's like, just as I'm not going, yay, hooray, at a tornado, I know I can't change a tornado. I'm just like, I'm going to just go, stop, no, oh, stop. It's like, at the end of the day, it's the way that it is, and we've got to work with what we have, right? We've got to get away out of the way of the tornado right? rather than just standing there and shaking our fist at it. Okay, so what was crucial has now become urgent. Yeah, we have to make unique music, which for me personally is great news because it's, it's been my obsession for a very, very long time. And it's for me, it is the journey of an artist. Making unique music is what an artist does. It's what distinguishes an artist from what I lovingly call a craftist, who is somebody who either makes music to order or 
makes generic music, like very generic music that fits within a genre and nothing else. Okay, because there are certain artists that can be unique within a genre. I would call them artists. It's, it's almost like their sound, while being within a genre, but their sound is stronger than the genre, even though they would choose to work within a genre. There are other artists who the genre is stronger than their sound. I would call them craftists. Yeah, in other words, people who make generic music. And again, I'm not, not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's just as hard. Do you know what? In fact, in many ways, it's harder to make generic music because as soon as you make generic music, you are competing with the best people in the genre. Whereas when you're making your own music, who are you competing with? You're competing with yourself. If you are the only person who makes this particular sound, then you're instantly more valuable. That's just market economics. Gold is more valuable than tin because there's not as much of it. So that's why in the modern music industry, developing your own unique sound is absolutely crucial.